Hello and welcome. My name is Manuel Quintana. And here in this little uh, kind of YouTube video that we're going to get to together, I'm continuing on a conversation that I had in a previous video where I focused on the conversation between what's called shared capacity and dedicated capacity. So if you want to go a little bit deeper into those realms, make sure you go and check out that video. Here we're going to kind of get into a sub bullet within there. And it's more of a focus on kind of dedicated capacity, but we're not going to really focus on that. So like I said, check out that other video but how it compares to what is the newest option, which is premium per user. Also, when we're talking about this discussion, some of the, um, I guess, points and concepts I'm gonna talk about when it refers to dedicated capacity is focused around uh, premium capacity gen two. Uh, so that's where I'm kind of focused as that is the direction for dedicated capacity and that there are various premium SKUs. Um, but this is going to be all about, as you can see here, about dedicated capacity versus premium per user with more of the focus on premium per user. So maybe you, you know, you and your organization can maybe have a better idea to decide, you know, we know we need some of these features. We know we need to take advantage of what premium gives us. But am I going with dedicated capacity, which is more of an organizational decision, as we'll talk about, or premium per user, which is still purchased by the organization, but is assigned to individual users. So, like I said, if you want to kind of understand more about shared and dedicated, PPU is interesting because it kind of falls in the middle of it. It's not per se shared capacity, but technically speaking, organizationally as a whole, you're still technically in a shared capacity. But if you have a workspace for PPU, it's kind of different. So we'll dive into that. And if you're unsure about what I talk about, I'll talk about it briefly here. But like I said, check out that other YouTube video. So first and foremost, let's just put up right off the bat, nice and easy, premium per user, per capacity. What are some of these features here that you get from one versus the other? Model size limitations. You can see here it says 10 gigabytes per user for both of these. Naturally, little uh, you know asterisk signs there. Um, you of course have this large model capacity, like large model format you can utilize. Um, and technically, uh, the premium per capacity, so that's the one that the organization will buy, that one's like upwards of 600 gigabytes now. Like it depends on what SKU you're using um, that they will bring that up. There's actually a kind of um, uh, a nice little like table, a matrix that kind of displays that. I could probably bring that up here momentarily. Let me see here. I think I have that link here. Uh, yeah, right here. So we'll just bring this over to just the main documentation you can see here where you have RAM. Like these are these limitations. So these are data sets. So you can see here, 10 is like the basic, but this is what's limited for pro. But as you go into that large data format, depending on what SKU, P1, A4, you can see their list on the left, these uh, data set sizes increase to 400. I believe you can actually request to go beyond this, but that's a request specific with Microsoft. So you'd have to kind of handle it in that regard. So that's what we're seeing and what we're talking about when we see this. The premium per user can go up to 100 gigabyte model sizes. And the next slide, I do have kind of more specifics on that, um, but it does exceed pro. So that's a big thing. We're seeing why premium per user and what do we get over this $20 per month versus the $10, which is pro, right? So that's the difference. It's $20 per user per month versus dedicated a little differently. Um, it's one of those things about licensing changes drastically with that but at the minimum like if we focus on like a p1 SKU, it's gonna be uh it's actually like four thousand nine hundred and ninety five dollars a month i just put five thousand there you can get the idea but you can see i mean some of these really cool features that were behind that paywall of premium which you know when you think about five thousand dollars per month that really kind of speaks to a specific scale within the organization the amount of users who are adopting the usage you know five thousand is not inexpensive, right? If you think about how many users you would need to be using for pro to make this offset, that number grows. It's pretty high up there. So at the end of this, even after these conversations, you kind of have to make those decisions because if you see how many users that you need to license using either pro or PPU, you can come up with that figure. Maybe it's slightly below the idea of paying $5,000 per month, but once you start thinking about what else do I get from dedicated capacity, these might be things that you are considering and you need to take advantage of. So that could be a tipping point. Sure, we'll pay a little bit more rather than individually licensing these individuals, um, but we get these things. Now it should be noted, right? If you just pay 5,000, that doesn't take care of everything. The users and the individuals who are gonna be actually inside of your workspaces in the portal, they still have to have a pro or a PPU license. So it doesn't completely eliminate that cost. 
Quite often though, when it comes to pro, if you have an enterprise agreement, an A5 or an E5, um, those pro licenses generally come accompanied with that. So there's a lot of caveats when it comes to those individual licenses. Here though, like I said, we're just trying to showcase the features and trying to say, hmm, this one's for me. So as you can see, all the different options here, the key things that are pretty important in my opinion that you get for being a premium per user is the refresh rate, right? Technically it's not restricted. Um, you can take advantage of the XML endpoints. It says 48 times per day because through the UI, through the portal, you can only schedule refreshes on the hour and half hour, which equates to 48 points in the day. But if you take advantage of like XMLA endpoints, you can actually go ahead and effectively refresh at any interval. So there is no restrictions on that. The increase in the model size is quite nice. Once again, it's actually a hundred gigabyte data set model size currently as of making this recording. Um, and we'll talk that basically that equates to a P3 SKU for premium. Um, paginated reports, right? There's a lot of popularity around paginated reports now. It seems to just people start are starting to find that there is a place in the organization for Power BI paginated reporting and premium per user workspaces allow for that. That's a great addition compared to pro. Uh, AI capabilities, auto ML, cognitive services, you can do this in premium per user workspace. So some of these big things that are available to per, ca per capacity now you can get for an individual for premium per user. Now, granted, you can see there's a couple of items here down at the bottom. These are going to be dedicated capacity specific. So if you are needing these items like multi-geo support, on-prem report server, and if you need to exceed that 100 gigabyte data set limitation, you would need to go with dedicated capacity. Specifically for that 100 gigabyte, you need to use a P4 or a P5 SKU. So those are some things if you just kind of check these boxes saying, I need this, I need this, I need this then kind of your decision is limited. <laughs> you got to use the premium SKUs there. Um, another thing that should be noted, and this is where it gets a little funny because when you, let's say you strictly, you do not have dedicated capacity, you just decide to assign users premium per user licensing. There's no scalability of resources, right? Dedicated capacity, as its name sounds, says, you're purchasing dedicated resources, virtual memory and virtual cores, and then you allocate them accordingly for usage. Um, premium per user doesn't give you that capability. There isn't that ability of kind of choosing and scaling, but it is meant to kind of leverage and take advantage of the capabilities and features that the premium Gen 2 um, capacity leverages. And once again, it's kind of built to mimic around that P3 SKU. But once again, without it's it's not the same because you don't get to scale. You don't have a selection of resources that you can use, but it is definitely performance, especially when compared to just using a pro licensing model. Now, if you do want to go that route for PPU, once again, I kind of just spoke on this term here. It is built upon the premium platform. You do get all of those check marks and benefits that we discussed. But the one thing you have to recognize is also how the overall licensing model will look if you're strictly looking at purchasing premium per user licensing. The key thing, and we have this listed, you can see this talks about the whole P3. The key thing for limitations here is going to be around sharing and that's actually going to be something that is it's is critical right so you can see the ppu tenant it shares the same 100 terabytes that's applied to the premium capacity tenant so this doesn't increase that at all it's now just being a part of that there's some elements of parallelism there's some items here around trial expirations but the key thing to consider and to remember here is that sharing right? Yes, you can buy and assign a user a PPU. You can actually, if you're a pro user, you might have noticed if you click on your icon in the upper right, you can do a trial for 60 days and check this out. And once again, I did go through this in my previous video, but it's all about creating a workspace. There is an option, you create a workspace, premium per user workspace, done. Or premium capacity workspace, dedicated capacity workspace, right? You make these choices. Technically also, you can move a premium per user capacity to a dedicated capacity. Um, in that case, you simply do have to uh, refresh the data sets once you do that, um, but you can make those transitions. Um, let's say you start with PPU and then you decide to transition away from those and you go just to dedicated. So this kind of migration can occur. But the key thing to remember here, and this was discussed in my previous one, is sharing capabilities, right? Premium per user is something that is individually assigned to users, and it is a minimum requirement for a user in order to be invited to a premium per user workspace. You get all those fun features, XMLA, paginated reports, all those things we saw in that first screenshot, those check marks, it's there for you, right? But when you wanna share an asset, an object that exists inside of that premium per user workspace, 
to you know five ten users those users must have a premium per user license themselves right so the same kind of idea when we talk about just pro and you say hey if you have pro licenses anybody who's just going to consume who you're going to share with, they have to have pro well now you're going a level higher right if you have a premium per user license and you have a report in a premium per user workspace and you share this that consumer must have a premium per user license as well if they have a pro it's not going to cut the bill so yes it's only ten dollars more per user per month but for how many users do we have to do this for so you can correctly kind of calculate what that cost is going to be versus let's not forget on the other side of the spectrum we have our dedicated capacity which once again when you create a workspace you can create a dedicated capacity and point it to your actual dedicated node and when that is set and done it's identified here now users who are invited to that can either be ppu or or pro but now when you hit share whether it's a dashboard whether it's a report doesn't matter what the license is for that end user free pro ppu it doesn't matter it gives you unlimited sharing capabilities with internal and external users. So that's that's definitely still the kind of that key shining gem and the kind of why would you go for dedicated? And it definitely kind of uh, speaks more towards that kind of mid to larger size organization for those larger scales of operation. Um, now, just in case for identification, right? If we back out of this slide deck just for a quick moment, I have right up on my screen, this is uh, just a tenant we have, and this is how you can identify a workspace that is of a dedicated capacity, right? You can see it right here. It's got this P Power BI premium cons. It's got this little diamond. Once again, if you hit create workspace, you go to advanced, you'll see you have all of these options available to you here, and you just make that decision. Is this gonna be a premium per capacity or a premium per user? This is where that decision is made. Now for premium per user, it looks a little different, similar, but a little different. Let me bring up that tenant here. You can see I'm just kind of right now on a PPU trial. If I go ahead and create a workspace here and we go over to advanced and I go with premium per user, it should click over here in a second. And I'll just go with um, YouTube test, All right? You're gonna see here, similar icon, it's just the diamond with a little person there. So that's how you can recognize in the world of workspaces, which one is a premium per user and which one is a premium. And along with that come all of those conversational benefits that we discussed. So kind of, I guess you can say, uh, and I'll, let me bring back the slide deck here. In closing, like what do we need to consider here, right? It's going to change organization to organization. I mean, that's just how it goes. You have to kind of uh, recognize and acknowledge how many kind of report writers do I have? How many users do, do I, am I going to need that need to be inside of a workspace to kind of manage those Power BI objects, whether it's, well, I guess I can't say that just yet, right? How, how many users do I need in my workspace to manage these objects? So that's one question, right? And then how many just straight up consumers do I have? You kind of have to understand and separate those groups and know those numbers. And then you can start to figure out some of the math already just talking about things like PPU versus Pro. You can figure out those numbers. Then even though it's not listed on here, there are some check boxes, right? That you just kind of have to move away from pro immediately if this is what you need. Do you need to use paginated reports? Well, that means you have to either go to PPU or premium. Do you want unlimited sharing capabilities for external and internal users? Then once again, you have to go to dedicated capacity. Do you have a model that exceeds 10 gigabytes? Well, in that case, you have a choice between PPU and dedicated. What if it exceeds a hundred gigabyte data set model? As of right now, then your only choice is to go with a P4 or a P5 SKU for dedicated capacity. So, so there's a lot of check marks, right? That's why that first little image there, you can have it to point a reference, you can find on the official Microsoft documentation. You just have to kind of go down the list. What are our requirements? Now, the thing is you can start with pro. Uh, you can just say, I'm not certain entirely, we're new to the adoption process. You start with licensing everyone with pro. Um, you can just purchase and add on premium per user licenses as you see fit, right? You could just add those in, purchase those and assign them to the respective users. And as well, when the time is right that you come to that kind of realization, understanding that, you know what, our organization, we actually do need to leverage dedicated capacity. Let's decide on what SKU we're gonna be using, right? So keep in mind, remember, it's not exactly the same, but PPU kind of mimics the idea of like a P3 SKU. You don't get to manage those resources. You don't get to reallocate it. It just takes advantage of the performance that's in there, the, the data set limitation sizes. Naturally, it is kind of built on that premium platform. 
So a lot of things, a lot of things to kind of consider and uh, kind of make those choices. So hopefully this video, along with the other one, so you can get a better understanding of just like shared capacity limitations, because I really didn't go that into that in this video. Definitely check out that conversation of shared capacity versus dedicated. With the dedicated conversation, naturally, there's going to be a little bit of crossover with what we discussed in this video. But here it's to kind of showcase the newest kid on the block, right? PPU, premium per user. It's been out since April. I think it became GA April of 2021. So it, it, we're coming up and then it's been available now for almost a year. Um, what's the right choice for me and my organization? So hopefully between these two videos that uh, there's an increased degree of clarity, a little bit better understanding. Uh, Microsoft do does give you the option to trial. So definitely, you know, take advantage and, you know, just test and see and try to figure out what is the best economic choice for your organization. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.